y'all welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be replacing a valve on a hydronic system. As you can see, the stem broke off of the old one. So as you can see, I've already removed this piece from the system, and I'm going to pro-press it back in using half-inch unions. So first I add a little bit of flux to the joint that I'm going to be desoldering. Flux aids in soldering and desoldering processes. It does that by removing oxide films which form on the surface of metals being soldered. All right, so after I ignite the torch, I'm going to apply heat evenly around the joint where the valve is connected. The solder will begin to melt as the joint heats up. So once the solder is molten, I'm going to use my channel locks to gently twist and pull the valve away from the copper pipe. And you want to be careful as the valve and pipe will be extremely hot. Next, I'm just going to follow that same process on the next joint. Then I'm going to prep the end of my copper by cleaning it with sunscreen. Next, I'm going to apply a thin layer of flux to the cleaned ends of the copper pipe. So before I begin soldering the valve in place, it's crucial that I open the valve. It serves a few important purposes. First, it protects the internal components, such as rubber or plastic seals from heat damage. Second, it allows heat to dissipate more effectively. And lastly, it ensures proper functionality by preventing any solder from accidentally obstructing the valve's internal pathways. So I'm going to direct the torch heat onto the valve end rather than the copper pipe. This technique ensures the valve gets hot enough to draw in the solder, creating a strong and reliable joint. Once the joint is hot enough, touch the solder to the joint. It should melt and be drawn into the fitting by capillary action. And continue applying solder until the gap is filled. So once I've applied the solder, I'm going to use a wet rag to cool the joint. This helps solidify the solder and prevents heat from traveling to other parts of the system. And next, I'm just going to use the same process on the other side. So the solder I'm using is a 95.5. It's 95% tin and 5% antimony, which makes it a lead-free option, which is commonly used in plumbing and HVAC applications. The type of solder offers several benefits. It has a high melting point of 464 degrees. It creates strong and durable joints, corrosion resistant, and like I already stated, it's lead-free. Being lead-free, 95.5 solder is a safer choice for potable water systems, and it also meets health and safety regulations. Finally, we clean off any of the remaining flux with a wet rag to prevent corrosion. And then we check our joints to make sure that everything is properly filled. Once we're done, the next crucial step is to turn off the acetylene torch and bleed the hose. This is important for a few reasons. First and foremost is a safety measure. Bleeding the hose ensures there's no residual gas left, minimizing the risk of accidental ignition or leaks. Additionally, it helps prevent damage to the hose by releasing any remaining gas pressure, which can degrade the hose material over time. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button for more videos like these.